Thank you, Dr. Hayden. Uh, we really look forward to learning from you uh, during the training session, and we really appreciate your training. Um, Julieta Brambilla, will you introduce yourself? Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And um, I work for USDA, AFIS PPQ, and my location is Gainesville, Florida, for Lyle and GMAR. And even if I'm with USDA, um, I am housed at the Florida Department of Agriculture. And one of the titles they give me is domestic identifier, meaning I process and identify samples from United States collected in US. And I participate in various programs of early detection of pests we don't want. And for this, we include our Puerto Rico, of course. But as I was saying, I'm not available just for you these few days. I'll be available for you for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Julieta. And I just want to, want to remind everyone that when you're not speaking, if you could just please uh, keep your microphone muted. And uh, it seems like some people at some point were having sound issues. Can everyone hear at the moment? I'm going to go ahead and give um, a Dennis Martin from the USDA APHIS uh, Greater Caribbean Safeguarding Initiative a chance to speak briefly if you would like to Say hello to everyone since he wasn't able to join us during the opening ceremony, Dennis. Um, good morning. I apologize for uh, missing the opening ceremony. Um, had had it all prepared, ready to go, and I was in the wrong time zone. So, uh, welcome everybody. I'm glad everybody uh, is willing to take time out of their busy schedules for this important training. And again, my apologies, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, number one, to being on time for the rest of the week, and number two, um, uh, a really uh, informative and timely training. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. We're, we're honored to have you here with us. And I also just wanted to, to let everyone know that I have uh, started recording this session. If some of the speakers do not want recordings released, we will not release those recordings. But for some of the speakers that are okay with recordings, if it uh, seems appropriate and the quality is good, then Janet will, um, will have that information and that can be potentially posted with CPD and information. We're going to also allow the rest of the team to, I guess, introduce themselves and then we're going to go to um, the participants. Um, Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. My name is Sarah Berkmeyer, and I am a current graduate student at the University of Florida. I'm working on my master's degree in entomology and my doctoral degree in plant medicine. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to help collaborate with this workshop. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, uh, Dr. Gideon Alaki, will you introduce yourself? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so my name is Gideon Alake. Uh, I'm a postdoc in uh, uh, Dr. Oji's lab. Uh, I've been around for quite uh, for about 10 months now, and uh, I'm very uh, honored to be part of this uh, training program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gideon. Andy, Jean-Louis. Good morning, everyone. My name is Andy jean -Louis. I'm originally from Haiti. I'm a DPM student. I'm in the second year of the program. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you, Andy. And now we'd like to, of course, hear from all of our valued participants because you are really why we're here and we're just so excited to meet you and get to know you. I'd, I'd like to he, uh, hear from, um, first from Antigua and Barba Barbudo. Um, and this should be um, Anesta uh, Augustine Edwards. My name is Anesta Augustine Edwards. I work with the Department of Analytical Services. So we basically assist the plant protection unit and other departments in ag the agriculture in running tests and if they need any help. So, so my role now is to learn that I could assist them in doing the surveillance and getting the test done. 
Thank you so much for joining us today, Anesta. We're excited that you're here. Do we have any participants from Belize here at the moment? So Belize may not be here yet, um, but I think I did see um, Claire Jesse from Bermuda. So Claire, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, that's great, thank you. Oh, is that better? Okay. Hi, I'm with the Bermuda Department of Environment and Natural Resources in Bermuda. I've been working here for about 22 years. I do my work in plant regulatory and quarantine and extension. I'm the government entomologist doing the plant identifications. And I understand about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire. We're excited to have your participation. Um, our next, next we'll go to the Cayman Islands. Um, I see Matt Castle here from the Cayman Islands. Uh, my name's Matt. I'm uh, the Plant Protection Officer at the Cayman Islands. And um, the department, Plant Protection Department specializes in uh, diagnosis and uh, technical advice to growers and homeowners. Thank you, Matt. We're excited to have you here and uh, we look forward to your participation. Next, we'll go to Dominica. And uh, I think we have Lanessa here. Okay. Um, Amanda, once we finish Dominica, we may need to go back to Barbados to Ian Gibbs. Don't know how I missed Ian, but you're correct. I somehow missed Barbados in my alphabetical, you know, looking at the list. So thank you, Janet. Uh, Lanessa, please introduce. And we'll go back to Ian Gibbs. Will you please introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ian Gibbs. I work with the entomology section of the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security in Barbados. Um, I have been in the area of entomology for ooh, over 40 years now and worked on all sorts of pests you could think of, including non-insect pests, as Amanda would know. <laughs> um, we have over the years had quite good uh, and strong links uh, with many colleagues throughout the region and beyond, including um, friends and colleagues at uh, University of Florida, Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, USDA, APHIS, um, and the list goes on and on. Um, I should let you know uh, before I forget right now that Come the end of this month, I will be proceeding on pre-retirement leave. And I therefore want to say a big thank you to all of my friends, colleagues uh, throughout the region uh, and beyond with whom I have worked on many, many projects throughout the years. It's been a pleasure working with you. And I hope that we will keep in contact with one another. Thank you. Ian, you have certainly been a fixture in the region for a long time and very much missed. And uh, certainly like to keep in contact. I, Barbados, as I've told you before, of course, all the countries are, are very nice. And it's a very good place to visit. But of course, this year, none of us are going anywhere. So. You know, in time, there will be time to start traveling around and about again. And you've just been very helpful, you know, from an entomology standpoint in the region. So thank you so much. I'm sure others would uh, agree that we really appreciated learning from you over this time. Um, Lene, Lanessa, would, would you like to try to speak again? Did you, uh, were you able to resolve your microphone issue. Okay. Uh, thank you for mentioning in the chat. I'm sorry we can't connect with you, but at least we can we can chat with you and we can see you. And we're so glad you're here and you're important to us, even though we can't hear you. Um, now we're going to move on to Grenada. Um, with the, I think um, the participants here from Grenada, the participant from Grenada, 
Looks like maybe Grenada is not able to be here. I don't know that I see Grenada. Oh, wait, there they are. Grenada, it looks like we have Elias. Do we have um, Adrian Wellington from Guyana? I think we do. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Adriana and I'm from Guyana. And I'm attached to the National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute. Um, I'm a research assistant there. Um, we're in charge of diagnosis for pests and disease across the country for non-traditional crops. That would be everything except for rice and sugar cane. Thank you. We're glad you're here. We have participants from Haiti. Um, um, we'll start with, um, would, would the Haiti participants like to introduce themselves? Good morning, everyone. I am Inoville Jasson from AET. I am engineer agronomist and agricultural extension pl specialist, planning and management. I am in the head of agrochemical product control board in the BPO of the Ministry of Agriculture in AET. Uh, it's a place to, for, to us to so participate in this training. Thank you. Thank you. And do we also have um, Fedner Louise and, and Marie St. Louis? Are they with you? And then we're going to have uh, Jamaica next. Javel Lee. Uh, Crooks is from Jamaica. Jamaica, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, Jamaica may have needed to step away. We're now going to go to the the Nevis introduction. Is uh, Quincy Bart here? Oh, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Um, my name is Travis Elliott. I'm attached to the Nevis Agriculture Department Quarantine Extension Division. I am currently sitting in for Quincy Bart. I'm his trainee because he's, he has other matters to attend to right now, the quarterly meeting for agriculture. So I'm sitting in for him currently, but he'll be present tomorrow. Thank you, Travis. We're, we're happy to have you here. Thank you. Yes. What about um, St. Kitts? Um, good day, everyone. I am Akil Bonaparte. I work at the Department of Agriculture in the quarantine unit. Um, and one of my main tasks is in the field of pest diagnostics. So I am always happy to learn more information in entomology and more. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We're excited that you're here. What about St. Lucia? Um, Biko, you're on um, mute. You can unmute yourself. Hi, good morning. Sorry about that. Um, currently attached to the Plant Protection Unit, Research and Development. Um, currently, we have uh, one ongoing program for fruit fly surveillance. So I think um, this training program would be an asset. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're, we're glad that you're here. About St. Vincent and the and the, the Grenadines. Is uh, Rafiq Bailey here? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Rafiq Bailey. I'm an entomologist by training. I work in the Ministry of Agriculture. I'm also the head of the Research and Development Division. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rafiq. That we're here. Thank you. And Suriname, do we have Vandana Kalis are here? I think we do. Hi, Amanda. Um, Suriname has written in the chat their their introduction. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if they are having some issues okay. with the microphone. Thank you. And um, likewise, Jamaica has written in the chat. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, for Jamaica, her microphone is not working. She has stated mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the update. What about Tobago? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. everyone. 
Hi, I am Casey Marie Boucher Kuhn Kuhn, the Specialist Officer Plan Protection for Tobago. Um, the department is a small unit, but we essentially work at um, monitoring all the pests and disease issues on the island. Uh, we coordinate the surveillance. Of course, um, we try to liaise with our counterparts in Trinidad as far as is possible. And we're responsible for all entomology pathology work on the Agro Extension. Thank you so much, Casey Murray. We're just so excited that you're here. Thank you. We had to. We can see Councillor from Suriname. It's so great to see you. Looks like your microphone is not working, but we can see your, your picture. And it, it, it looks like um, your name is Vandana Kalasar and that you work for the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Husbandry and Fisheries at the Entomology Department of Suriname as a junior assistant. And we're, we're just so excited to, to have you here. Thank you, Kalasar. And reading from the chat as well for Jamaica, uh, good morning, uh, Javanelli Crooks is a plant protection officer at Bodle's Research Station under the Ministry of Agriculture in Jamaica. And we also have Trinidad to introduce. Um, Rishi? Hi, morning. Um, Rishi Mohan Singh, entomologist from Trinidad, and it's a pleasure to be part of this training and I look forward to uh, actually getting a lot of information that we can actually try and, and work in Trinidad as well here. Thank you so much. This is such a, a wonderful group and um, quite a bit of experience, you know, in the region on the, um, uh, on the line. And so we're, we're looking forward to focusing on Tuda, but uh, also just learning from you as we go, because this is just a, a really exciting opportunity. Our first, um, our first presentation will actually be by uh, Sarah Berkmeyer, and she's going to kind of go over what you should have received already so that uh, hopefully you have all of your materials ready to go as, as we begin the training um, over the next uh, few days. Uh, Sarah, are you ready to present? Sure am. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. All right, so can everybody see? Yes, okay. So we're gonna go over what's in the packages that you have received. So the package that you received from APHIS, you're going to have um, some Delta traps with sticky liners that you will use to um, collect different specimens in the field, hopefully some Lepidoptera. Um, you got pheromone lures, which you should be able to apply onto these sticky liners. Um, so it will be the delta trap with the sticky liner inside and the pheromone on top. And that is what you will place in the field to do your trapping. You will have baskets and hangers for the traps. Um, some different instructional materials like an emergency response plan with um, information there. You have received a surveillance protocol, which is two pages long and clip-on microscopes. And you can see a picture of the clip-on microscope here. Um, we will make sure to get a link to you um, with an instructional video on how to use the clip-on microscope. Um, that is available from amazon.com and we will distribute that to you. And then this is what you have received from us here at UF. Um, we have sent you a variety of instructional packets, um, including an instructional packet on how to dissect the Helicoverpa uh, zia specimens. Um, there are instructions for specimen removal from the sticky traps using Histoclear 2. There are instructions for handling the KOH and how you will use that in preparation for your Helicoverpa dissection. There's also instructions for a special DIY method on how to use an alternative chemical, chemical to the KOH, provided you don't have the KOH available. Um, that has been made available to you in the instructional packet. There are instructions for labeling your specimens appropriately. For curation. And then there is a data sheet for um, safe use of Histoclear 2. So these are other items that you have received from the University of Florida. You got some insect pins, which you can use to um, prepare any specimens that you might capture throughout this week. Um, 
they are a very small diameter. I believe most of them are size zero. Um, so you can use those for pinning your Lepidoptera or any other insects that you might find. You've received gel capsules, and um, these can be used for the uh, preservation of some of your Lepidopteran specimens. Very small moths uh, can be placed inside of these gel capsules, and you've been provided with instructions on how to preserve them as such. The Histoclear II is likely in a couple of uh, different vials. Oh, I'm sorry, one second. The Histoclear II is in um, several vials. In order to ship it, we had to uh, break it up into small quantities, but you should have 50 milliliters of the Histoclear II for the specimen removal from the sticky traps. Um, you will be cutting your sticky cards into smaller sections so that you can use this small quantity of the Histoclear for this procedure. You've received different insects on sticky cards. These are in Ziploc bags. So when you remove the sticky cards, you want to make sure to be very careful um, to peel the sticky card away from the Ziploc bag. And you'll be removing your specimens from the, from the sticky cards. And then you've received the Helicoverpa zia specimens in 70% ethanol. These will, you will be using for the dissections. And quick here is a little list of items that you should already have in your lab. Um, this information was sent to you in advance. Um, if you do not have any of these materials, uh, feel free to reach out and let us know um, and we can see what kind of accommodations can be made. You're going to want to have some sort of a heating block, obviously one um, for laboratory use is preferred, but you can also use a coffee mug warmer if you'd like. That would be appropriate for, this, for the procedure. You're going to want to have a dust mask, a sharpie, and a pencil. You want a couple different types of forceps. You want blunt, broad, and round forceps. You will need a syringe or hypodermic needle, a scintillation vial, and you can see a picture of that on the right here in case you don't know what that means. Um, it's just a little glass vial with a uh, lid, and you want to have a 20 milliliter size. You want to have some 90% ethanol available. Um, you're going to be preparing, uh, as per the instructions we gave you, a 10% KOH solution, and this will be prepared using KOH pellets. It's very important that before you handle these pellets that you um, consult the safety uh, information available in the dissection protocol um, and maybe the safety data sheet that came with your product. You make sure you handle this safely because it is a dangerous, is a dangerous product. You're going to want to have some gloves, a plastic disposable pipette, an eye shield, a dissecting microscope with 80, 80 times magnification, and then your mobile phone with internet service. And that's the end of our little presentation on your materials. I hope everybody got the packages okay. We definitely put in a lot of work uh, getting those to you. Thank you. We have a little, little bit of time for questions. Um, I'm just getting the room assignments finished. Uh, and so if we could just, uh, Sarah, if you could just entertain questions for a few minutes. Um, yes, does anyone have any questions for me? No questions at this time. And so we're just about to start with our, our breakout rooms. Yes, and just so you all know, if you need to ask a question um, and you aren't able to using your audio, feel free to send them in the chat. I'll make sure to closely monitor that. And so what we're going to do now, I don't know how many of you have actually um, um, uh, participated in a breakout room before, but we're going to actually practice just briefly going into a breakout room for an icebreaker so that we can get to know each other just a little bit more uh, individually in our rooms. And then we're going to come back to the main session and we're actually going to use the breakout quite a bit to go through the hands on. So this is kind of a practice for today when we get even deeper into the content um, for the next few days. So I'm about to open all the rooms. So you'll see your, your room um, available. So yeah, you can just click join and join your room. Well, thanks everyone for um, participating in that process. Hopefully everybody became more familiar with the breakout process. Um, the kind of questions that, um, that we talked about going over in there were, you know, to know each other a little bit more in the process and to learn about, you know, what kind of background that you had in, in uh, Lepidoptera and what you hope to learn so that we can, um, we the 
organizers and instructors can kind of learn from that and make this the best possible session. Uh, so I'm just going to call on the groups to kind of tell me, you know, what you kind of learned uh, from this, uh, from your breakout. I know some of you actually had trouble getting into the breakout and back out. So that was, I guess, part of our practice there. We're definitely going to keep the Haitian group together as a Haitian Creole group speaking in French, but um, the other groups, we, we may mix up a little bit here and there, but we've got a really great team. All right. Yeah, so I'd invite any of um, my group members to pitch in on this, but um, we just kind of took a little bit of time getting to know everybody's level of involvement with Lepidoptera in general. Um, and we have mixed responses. A lot of people have reached the master's level of education, and so they've had um, a little bit of experience here and there with Lepidoptera, but never ne necessarily specialized in Lepidoptera. And we also have members who are, are really not too familiar with Lepidoptera other than on a surface level. So I've emphasized that this is okay. Um, we're going to be providing a lot of background information on Lepidoptera for everybody. So wherever you're coming from is just fine. So anybody from my group can feel free to chime in as well. Okay, it sounds like nobody else is trying to speak right now from, from that particular group. What about um, Lyle? Uh, what, what, did, uh, what did you guys talk about? Oh, we got a good good group too. Uh, a lot of different uh, expertise in the group, and uh, it's interesting that uh, a, a lot of you folks you know, have to be a bit of a generalist. You, you do a lot of uh, things. You know, I, I do mainly extension work here at University of Florida, but uh, many of you folks do. You know, do you do entomology and, and pathology? Uh, you do both research and uh, extension work with growers, uh, diagnostic work. So I'm amazed at uh, how many different things you, you all do. Uh, some of the folks are interested in the the, the, the section session that's coming up and uh, and learning more about how to do that task. I think a couple of folks uh, haven't received the supplies yet, so hopefully they will be reaching out to you, Amanda or Sarah, and uh, just making sure you know, what's what's going on there. Yeah. Those supplies right there with them, you know, during this training, particularly into you know, them doing different hands-on pieces. It's gonna be pretty important to have those supplies. So thanks for letting us know that, Lyle. Anybody else have anything to say from Lyle, the group that Lyle was in? I can interject really quickly. I'm getting a few messages from people uh, saying that they haven't received their packages from APHIS. Um, Renita, I think you're probably the best person um, to contact about this. So anyone who has reached out to me about not receiving their APHIS package, please feel free to send a private message to uh, Renita here in the chat and um, we can try to uh, figure out how to um, heal the situation, okay? Great, Sarah, thanks. What about for the group that um, that Gideon you were in? I think we have uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, at least a larger percentage of the group had a lot of experience, uh, maybe more than 10 years of experience uh, with working uh, uh, in entomology and uh, in Lepidoptera as well. And uh, a lot of us too, uh, uh, Quite uh, interested in the in the training and uh, happy, uh, really excited to learn uh, to I mean to learn a lot of things from this uh, training. Uh, one thing that did came up was the fact that due to the uh, internet issues that they're having in the Caribbean as as a result of the uh, weather condition and things like that, that if they can rec uh, get the recordings of the different sessions. Uh, uh, yeah, so that they can uh, make reference to them anytime they are, uh, they are not really sure of what they are doing, uh, that they will really love it. And uh, I think someone also really excited uh, that they to learn a lot of, uh, more about uh, dissection and things like that. So videos about the dissection and things like that will be uh, of uh, value to them. Uh, 
in uh, in uh, in those areas where the internet do, uh, may not allow them to to participate uh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Anybody else? from that group that Gideon was in have anything to say? Yeah, Amanda, I, I just wanted to add um, that what um, Dr. Buss said was quite correct. Many of us in the Caribbean, especially in the smaller countries, have everything to do with plant protection. Um, you know, technical aspects, research, uh, even regulatory aspects as well. So sometimes we find it a bit difficult to to actually focus in on one particular area. So it's good that we can get a little bit of extra training um, specifically for Lepidoptera so that we can use it when we, are, when we really need it. Thank you, That's, it's great to hear. I'm glad that this will hopefully be useful. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, Andy, um, can you share what was discussed in the Haitian group? Uh, it was really an excited group. It was like uh, the, the main idea was trying to know each other, trying to know a little bit about what's going on in Haiti. Mm -hmm. So why, why they, they intercepted the, the pest already. So that was about two years ago since now they've been monitoring for it. So it was... And they are, they have a big and they are, they have a lot of experience working for the state in agriculture and plant protection. So they they, they are not really knowledgeable about the uh, the pests, the, the lepidoptera. They are expected to 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 learn a lot and be able to identify the pests whenever they get it. This was hopefully a, a good introduction, and. Um, and a good exercise. And we are going to go back briefly to our groups uh, before we close. The practice. But, you know, as much as you can, and I know there are issues going on, but we are, we want this to, to be as interactive as we as possible where, you know, you're able to hopefully turn on your cameras and eventually um, you're in your labs kind of uh, doing protections when we that piece uh, and, and that sort of thing as well. So just keep thinking about those elements as much as you can going forward, realizing that it, it may not be possible in due to the weather and things that are happening. So we're now going to move on to a presentation by Lyle Buss on photography. Um, Lyle, are you ready to begin? Yes, I believe so. I I'm Lyle Buss, and uh, as I mentioned before, I work at the uh, entomology and nematology department at the University of Florida, and I want to talk to you today about uh, some tips for taking photographs. And in uh, in my work, I I get a uh, I get a lot of uh, photographs sent to me as a as a diagnostician, and. Uh, you know, I used to get more just actual physical samples, but uh, nowadays with everybody having a phone camera with them at all times, I actually get a lot more digital samples than I do physical samples. So why is it important to take photographs? Well, of course, the more information you can get about a pest problem, the better. And so if you are seeing a, uh, a plant problem out in the field, it's uh, great to document this plant problem uh, with uh, pictures of any kind of damage that you might be seeing, uh, the pests that are involved, whether they be uh, insects or pathogens or abiotic issues. Uh, great to have uh, pictures of this to, to document it for uh, future reference and also for identification of uh, what pests you are seeing. Uh, preferably, it, it's good to have the pictures as a supplement to the uh, actual specimens that uh, can be sent to a, a diagnostician. But uh, all of this information is uh, very helpful. 
So you don't need to have a professional camera equipment in order to get good pictures. You know, the cameras that are on smartphones nowadays are really good and will uh, you know, take care of a lot of our photography needs, really. Now, when you start thinking about insects and how a lot of them are pretty tiny, there are some attachments that you can get that will help you uh, in that regard. And on uh, here you see uh, one of those uh, attachments. It's a little macro lens that just clips onto your phone over the, the camera lens and uh, provides a little extra magnification to uh, really zoom in on small things. And these kind of attachments are easy to get you know, from Amazon or lots of places. They are pretty cheap. So for anywhere from five to fifty dollars, there are lots of options of these uh, macro lenses. Now, of course, uh, ideally, you would like to get your magnification from a microscope, and if possible, a microscope system where you have a dedicated camera. But of course. Uh, a lot of labs aren't going to have this kind of equipment. But if you do have access to a microscope, uh, once again, your cell phone can come to the rescue. And uh, you can actually get pretty good pictures using your cell phone by holding it up to the eyepiece of your microscope. And it actually works surprisingly well. And if this is the kind of thing that you do pretty often, you may want to invest in uh, one of these little adapters here. And it's uh, essentially a, a couple clamps here that, to hold your phone and it also attaches to the eyepiece of the microscope and you can use it to kind of really uh, fine tune position that phone over the, the eyepiece so you can take multiple pictures. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about insect uh, photography. If you are seeing insects in the field and uh, you want to document them or, or uh, potentially get identifications, it is good to take pictures of whatever life stages you are seeing. And so both uh, immature and adult stages, get, get pictures if possible. Also get photos of the host plant that the insects are on and any kind of damage that they appear to be causing on the plant. The pictures of the plant can be especially useful if you're not sure what the plant is. Then photos can be sent to a botanist and the plant identification can actually be very helpful in uh, figuring out what the insect pest is. When Photographing an, an insect, the most important image to get is usually the view from above showing the entire insect. And then any other images you can get at various other angles, uh, close up images of certain parts of the insect, like the antennae or wings, are especially important in diagnostics. Uh, some Reference to the size will be helpful to anyone looking at the pictures because uh, sometimes it's uh, not immediately evident as to how big this uh, bug really is. And so you can either get a ruler and measure the insect and report that length, or you can uh, take a picture of the insect next to a ruler or any object of known size like a coin. Now the color of insects can be very important in identification from images. And uh, here's an example of a, a particularly tough insect to photograph because it's uh, black, very dark. And you might think that uh, photographing this dark insect on a white background would be good because you got good contrast there, but it creates a problem for the camera because the camera has to try to account for both 
uh, very dark and very light in the same image, which is tough to do. So these pictures tend to turn out on the dark side. And uh, a lot of times all I can really see is a silhouette of the insect. So instead photographing a dark insect on a relatively dark background will usually give you better results because the camera can adjust the exposure time and the resulting picture will usually have more detail and be brighter and better for diagnostics. It's always a good idea to keep specimens uh, just in case uh, a particular pest can't be identified from pictures alone. It's also a good idea to review pictures while you are taking them. You know, I pretty often get, get pictures where that obviously wasn't done and uh, what, they are, what, they all, what they have to send me is just totally out of focus because they didn't check it at the time. And uh, if possible, when you're sending the image to someone for diagnostics, uh, send the original image, the largest version of it. And to kind of demonstrate what I mean by this is, uh, is here on, on my iPhone, if I take a picture and uh, I want to send a picture over email, my phone will give me four different options of sizes of, the, of images to send. And uh, if usually what I would want to do is send the actual size, the largest one. And so here on the left, as, as often happens with uh, insect images, the, the insect subject in the image is really a pretty small portion of the total image. And so I have to zoom in on a small area and like I've done here, with a large image, I can zoom in on a small area and still retain a good amount of detail there. Now, if I was working from a small image, it may look good at the beginning, but when I try to zoom in on a small area, you can see that it very quickly becomes pixelated and you, you lose any detail because there just isn't enough information in those small images. And so I see that pretty often where people will just send me a 50 kilobyte image, which you know, just has hardly any information there. And it's just uh, way too blurry to do much from. Plants can also be uh, readily identified from pictures very often. It's uh, great to start from farther away where you can get a picture of the entire plant and uh, the growth form. Uh, then you want to get closer and get uh, close-up images of the leaves, a uh, picture of the stem showing the arrangement of the leaves coming off of it, uh, any reproductive structures like flowers and fruit are very helpful in identification. Uh, even pictures of the bark and buds can sometimes be helpful. The time of day can actually affect how well your pictures turn out. Uh, I used to think that taking pictures on a bright sunny day was the way to go because you have uh, plenty of light. But uh, these kind of conditions tend to make for pictures that have a lot of harsh shadows and other subjects that are overexposed. So you lose a lot of detail in, in these images and they really just don't look good. So Taking pictures on a cloudy day actually gives you a lot better images. Uh, it's best to fill the frame with uh, your subject as uh, much as possible. And that will give the, the most uh, amount of detail in your subject. Uh, try to uh, include some of the surrounding area in, in uh, at least one of your images as well to show what kind of maybe habitat the plants are growing in. And uh, another topic here, use a background to force focus. What I mean there is, uh, and I see this a lot in, in pictures like this 
here where the subject actually was an insect here in this case. There are two green beetles here is what they were intending to photograph. But what the camera focused on was the background, the, the soil here. And so this happens a lot with uh, insects, especially on, on plants where you have a lot of uh, depth there and maybe your subject is, is pretty small and your camera doesn't uh, find that small thing to focus on. And so it may help to uh, do what I did here where I just put my hand in the field of view next to the subject that I want to photograph. And that way you, the, the camera has a larger area to focus on to make sure that your subject is in good focus. Uh, plant pathogens are sometimes uh, diagnosable through images. Uh, it's best to get pictures of the symptomatic tissue. So getting photos of dead plants or dead tissue on the plants uh, usually doesn't yield any good information and uh, can actually be a bit confusing because there may be secondary fungi growing on the dead plant tissue that will just confuse the situation. But if you can find that uh, margin between the healthy tissue and the symptomatic tissue, that's a great place to start taking photographs. If you see any uh, infestations of insects that could potentially be vectors of a plant pathogen, uh, insects like aphids and white flies, uh, get photos of them as well. Any other signs that you might see on the plant, uh, anything that is oozing from the plant or fungal mycelial growth, get photographs of that. Again, uh, don't just uh, take close-up pictures, uh, get farther back to get pictures of the entire plant to maybe see what the distribution of the symptom symptomatic tissue on the plant is and uh, see some of the area around the plant. It, it can be helpful to know if uh, the plant is growing in a natural setting or maybe they're in pots, what kind of uh, spacing or density of the plant is involved. Uh, symptoms on surrounding plants. All this information can uh, potentially be very helpful to the diagnostician. Uh, here's a good example of uh, photos for plant pathogen diagnosis. Here on the left, we have a picture where a plant has both healthy tissue and symptomatic tissue in the same image. And then on the right, we have a nice close-up image of the uh, spore fruiting bodies. So very helpful to the diagnostician. Now still even with uh, the best photos, uh, plant pathogens are very tough to diagnose using uh, images. And so uh, oftentimes the pathologist may only be able to give a, a guess as to uh, what it is or maybe narrow it down to you know, this being a fungal problem or a viral issue. Uh, so it's always good to keep samples of uh, the plant tissue for uh, confirmation of uh, any kind of diagnosis that might come from the images to begin with. I, this have some uh, citations here of uh, uh, websites that have more information on uh, taking photographs for diagnostic purposes, whether it be plants or insects, pathogens. And uh, also would like to thank the folks that authored this uh, presentation, Sage Thompson, Morgan Byron, and Amanda Hodges. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Lyle. We really appreciate your presentation. Um, does anybody have any immediate questions? Okay, and now just to, again, practice going back to our breakout rooms. We have a, a, a fairly simple breakout activity that we're going to do um, in our groups. And the activities that we do in our groups will become more complicated, you know, as we get into uh, highly technical content uh, tomorrow. 
but the photography piece is important and and i think it it makes a big difference some of you that have been you know working with samples for a long time can speak to this as well but a quality picture you know along with a sample i mean it, it can it can really uh Sometimes the picture alone can um, be sufficient really for the identification that you need. And it really just helps with the diagnosis. And so this, this is pretty important. So in this simple activity that we're going to do in our groups, this is an activity maybe you could even use uh, in training if you're doing any virtual training for your inspectors and identifiers, you know, in your respective countries. So it's a it's a fairly uh, simple activity, but we're going to use the same principles that we use in this activity for more technical activities later on. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and place you back in your breakouts. Welcome back, everyone. We will go group by group for feedback. Andy, how did everything go in your group? It went pretty good. We we took some times we were not done yet but it was really good mm -hmm. so we we're able to identify them to to know normally what how to take a good picture mm -hmm. yeah the, inter the interaction went, went went pretty well they did pretty well i think now they can submit some samples to to dr lyle sometimes they, they will do a good job so the activity itself was useful a lot, yeah, it was really useful. Mm -hmm. So like sharing ideas, like give give different ideas. It's bad, why 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 is it bad? It's good, why is it good? In some cases, they were saying that the picture is good, for example, the number five, but it, it would need some additional pictures. Good point. Sometimes additional pictures, additional information. Yes. Very good. What about the next group? What about Ian Gibbs, the group you were in? How did that go? Yeah, um, I, I think it went pretty good. Um, there were a couple of points raised that uh, people had uh, in, de in taking photos and most of which we got resolved, I think. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a learning process all the time. Yeah. Others from from the group. So, I mean, I was, of course, like you were saying earlier, you know, sometimes you're so busy, it's hard to, um, it, it's really hard to focus on things, maybe even like photography. Lyle has the benefit of focusing some on photography. I tell you, his photographs are much, much better than mine. So I feel like I learned through this process as well. But did you think this is also something that maybe you could use in front of your inspectors? Definitely. Very good. Thanks. So let's go on to another group. Lyle, is there somebody from your group maybe you could call upon to report back? Uh, uh, sure, if any of them want to. I know Matt had a lot of uh, good comments. If, if he wants to say what he thought of it uh. yeah i guess from a agronomic point of view i'd always like to know what the owner of the plant has been doing in the past so what their feed and watering regime is what their pesticide regime is what exactly they've sprayed so that i can eliminate any cultural issues with the plant before i then move on with my diagnosis a really good point. Thanks, Matt. Um, Lyle, is there anything else you can think of? Uh, no, it's a good group. They had a lot of uh, good ideas about uh, you know what was good and bad in the, the pictures in the exercise and how to improve them, uh, what other information would be helpful or necessary for the diagnostic lab. Uh, you know, tell these folks uh, working labs there they have to you know they know they know a lot so it was good 
Really great. Any anyone else from this group want to speak up? I was being asked um, how we receive assistance. So I was telling the um, group, and I was sent a, a message. I'll just say, I was telling the group that um, we submit samples all the time to the Florida Department of Agriculture, the Division of Plant Industry. We send to various um, experts or samples, be it insect samples or picture samples, and we receive identifications. Um, I think right now it's at the cost. Very well. Thank you, Lanessa. I really appreciate that feedback. And yeah, I think uh, the Florida Department of Agriculture does really appreciate that relationship with the Caribbean region as well and the ability to communicate and collaborate and, and, um, and appreciates the connections. Um, I guess we'll move on to the next group. Uh, Sarah, is there maybe somebody from your group that, that could share something that you could point to? Yeah, so one thing I want to emphasize is that um, there is mention of submitting to DDIS here in the presentation that we used. Um, that's what we uh, talk to people about uh, with our Florida First Detector program, the Master Gardeners here, that's what we're suggesting that they do. Um, what we're going to talk about later on in the workshop is submitting to CPDN. Um, so that's going to be the, your go-to resource um, from where you're located for your su sample submission. But as for what we uh, discussed in our group, um, we had a very wonderful interactive group experience. And um, I just wanna back up what Matt said about um, submitting cultural information. I think that that's gonna be really important providing those types of information to um, your identifier um, when you submit your sample. I think that that is a wonderful suggestion. But yeah, anybody else from my group who wants to chime in, please feel free. I have to say from what I saw from all of the groups, it seems like there was pretty good in-group interaction, which you could maybe agree or disagree with that statement by looking at the reaction button on the bottom of your toolbar and thumbs up or thumbs down. If you didn't think the interaction was good, you can, you can give it a thumbs down too if you prefer, or you can give it a thumbs up if, if you had good group interaction. And um, so it seems like this was a good exercise. I also would like to point out in the chat, I think Sarah already responded to Julieta's comment. So Julieta commented that um, the hardest exercise was the, the pathology, the plant pathology example. Um, and it had a lot of, of good discussion and we were in the middle of it, that her particular group when, when they finished. And it is kind of hard to, to judge when these groups should end because some groups end earlier than others. So. You know, I, I, I did, I, I am mindful of that, but I also just wanted to finish the time. So sometimes there's a little more in the group than, than we can actually finish, but glad that you had a good discussion. Sarah responded that the big takeaway from the plant pathology example is to get an Im image of the whole plant, the leaves up close, the leaf arrangement on the stem, and the problem at hand. And, um, and so I, I know many of you think about plant pathogens as well as insects. It probably depends on your position. So when we do our, our master gardener, our, our local in-state training, we, we focus on both. And so we just thought this was a good exercise, hopefully to go through just for practice. Now, starting first thing in the morning at nine o'clock, we will be beginning with a very technical content in the morning, but what I really like everyone to do, if, if you're not that familiar with um, thinking about how you're gonna go about uh, trapping for and screening uh, target high risk Lepidoptera, or if you haven't given Lepidoptera much thought before, or even if you have thought about them before, maybe you could, you know, between now and tomorrow, See if you can collect any sort of moth, even from the, your back porch light. You know, it's uh, pretty easy to collect any sort of moth. It wouldn't have to necessarily, we don't think it's going to be Tuda, but um, just start thinking about um, where you see moths and maybe just collecting uh, a moth if you've not done that before or providing a photo or taking a picture of a moth or some sort of Lepidoptera that you have not photographed before because that would be particularly taking a photograph would be a great way to practice that 
thinking about the photograph of the specimen. And, and we've got great people here. Any, almost most of the common lepidoptera, I think you photograph. I think most of these guys that, that we have here that, are, that we have brought in for ex, expertise, there's gonna be somebody or somebody here from the region because all of you are experts that know what you did take a fun photograph of. So we'd like to just encourage you to think about taking a photograph or collecting like a, a random moth that you can think about from your back porch between now and, and tomorrow if there's time and just, just think about that. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be getting into the more technical content. I believe it's tomorrow that you'll also have to start uh, taking those those samples that you have and um, and um, preparing uh, to soak the uh, abdomens for particularly the helicarpa for the dissection. But um, I just want to uh, just give these other speakers a moment. Is there anything else that uh, you can think about that you would like to say to the participants before we conclude for today? Uh, I don't have any Amanda, but thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. This is good participation. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Thank you. It's, it's a great group and uh, so interactive, and that that's going to make it fun. And um, and we're we're going to probably learn a little bit maybe about what's going on in the region as well. And I would just love to see some fun Lepidoptera pictures, you know, tomorrow from the participants. Julieta and Lyle, do you have anything else? Nothing in uh, particular myself. Uh, just uh, very cool uh, seeing you all here and, and hearing about what you do. And just uh, looking forward to interacting with you more. And thanks. It's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. Sarah, have I missed anything? Uh, can I submit my Profile picture as my sample tomorrow. <laughs> yes, you can submit your profile picture. Great. I think you've covered everything. I think this has been a great session today and we can consider it a success. All right. Well, um, we're, we're so grateful to all of you. And of course, to Aika, Janet Lawrence, to Re Renita Sorensen from uh, USDA APHIS, the APHIS office. And um, please feel free to reach out to Sarah and I if there are these log logistical questions that, that we can help you with. You will be receiving the email from me that I mentioned with um, uh, the PDF of the PowerPoints for tomorrow so that can help you with that. And with that, a thank you to all the participants. I am going to ask the speakers and uh, to stay on and, and the, my, the people from my lab to stay on for just a few minutes afterwards. So thanks everyone.